In this video we're going to discuss some other operations you can do with matrices besides multiplying them. So the first of these is matrix addition. So if you have two matrices A and B um, which are both M by N matrices and let's say that they're entries are aij and bij then you can define a new matrix a plus b whose ijth entry is the sum aij plus bij you're just adding the corresponding entries of a and b so for example uh, you know 1 0 1 1 plus uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, would be minus 1, uh, would be what? 1 plus 1, 2, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus minus 1 is 0. All right, just adding each entry with the corresponding entry to get the entry in the same place. So this is perhaps most familiar and most useful when you're looking at vectors because you know vectors are in particular matrices so this is a special case of, of matrix addition right so let's suppose you have a let's just again stick with uh, the plane suppose you have a vector x y and a vector a b think of these as two by one matrices then addition tells us we should be doing x plus a and y plus b. So this has a nice geometric interpretation which may, maybe you've seen. Um, suppose you have a vector x, y and a vector a, b. Maybe I'll do a, b in a different colour. In fact maybe I'll do them both in colours so x, y is going to be red <coughs> and AB is going to be blue. Uh, so if you want to get the sum of those two vectors uh, what you do is you take one of them, doesn't really matter which, let's say take the blue one, you transport it in a parallel way until it sits at the end, the tip of the red vector. Like so and now draw an arrow from the base of the red vector to the tip of the blue vector and um, that's going to be our sum so if this is x y this is a b then this is x plus a y plus b it's not too hard to convince yourself of this, right? Because what is the x coordinate of this point here? It's obtained by taking the x coordinate of this red point here and adding it to the x component of this blue vector, which is a. should move some of these vectors out of the way. Okay, so to get the uh, the x component of this point, this orange vector here, you just add the x component of the red and the blue vectors. That's what this is saying. And similarly for the y. In this case, you're going up by y and then down by b to get there. Another thing you can do, that's matrix addition, vector addition, you can rescale. You know, given a number lambda, which is a real number, and a matrix A, you can get a new matrix, lambda A, and this is just obtained by rescaling all of the entries of A. So for example, 2 times 1 times 2 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 times
times um, one, two, three, four is two times one, two times two, two times three, and two times four. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to combine these two operations and matrix multiplication and define a much more interesting operation which is matrix exponentiation. So we're not going to spend long on this. You'll see this more if you do a module on uh, Lie groups and Lie algebras. Um, so how do you define the exponent or exponential of a number x? Well, there are various ways, but probably the best is to say it's defined by its Taylor series. It's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial. So that's 2 factorial secretly. Uh, plus dot dot dot. In other words, it's sum x to the n over n factorial from n equals 0 to infinity. This is a convergent power series. It's as nice as possible. It's like one of the best power series. Basically because this n factorial gets so large so quickly that it dominates the sort of exponential growth of x to the n. Um, okay, and you can use literally this definition where x is now a matrix to define matrix exponentials. So let's replace all the x's by a's. Right, a to the n is just a times a times a times a n times. 1 over n factor is just rescaling the matrix and then we're summing. And okay, well, it's an infinite sum so you have to worry about convergence of uh, sequences of matrices but let's not worry about that. Uh, this is a, a really nice operation. Let's do an example. So the simplest kind of example is when A is what's called nilpotent, something like this, 0, 1, 0, 0. Something where A to the N eventually becomes 0. In this case, A squared is actually already 0. You can check that. So in particular, all the higher terms in this sum are going to vanish. So the sum is actually a finite sum in this case. It's just x of a equals... Uh, now I should say, here I've done that thing where I, I said I'd do it, where I've written the identity matrix as a 1. So this is really the identity matrix here. So x of a is the identity matrix, which is 1's on the diagonal, plus a plus a whole bunch of zeros. In other words, this is just 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so we get a shear, a two-dimensional shear, by exponentiating this matrix here. And actually, if this was a parameter, say t, rather than just a 1, there'd be a t here, and we get a whole one-parameter family of shears which shear further and further to the right as t gets larger and larger. Let's do another example. Uh, let's take uh, a equals 0 minus t, t, 0. This is one of my favourite examples. So what happens if we do a squared? If you multiply it out, you're going to get minus t squared, 0, 0, minus t squared in other words that's minus t squared times the identity matrix so a cubed is well we can we can actually we can think of a already as being t times the matrix 0 minus 1 1 0 so a cubed is now minus t squared times the identity times t times this. So that's minus t cubed 
times 0 minus 1, 1, 0. And a to the 4, again, when we multiply by a, we're just increasing the power of t by 1. So we get t to the 4. And now we have 0 minus 1, 1, 0 times 0 minus 1, 1, 0. That's minus the identity. So overall, we lose this minus sign. And we get the identity. And what you can show is that actually x of a is the identity um, plus t times this matrix minus t squared times the identity. Sorry, t squared over 2, right? There's this... Uh, is factorials uh, minus t cubed over 3 factorial times this matrix plus t to the 4 over 4 factorial times the identity plus t to the 5 over 5 factorial times this matrix hey, hopefully you're starting to see where I'm going I'm just going to put dots there this is something times the identity matrix plus something times 0, minus 1, 1, 0. What's the something? Well, if you look at it, it's actually the power series of cos and the power series of sine. So this is cos t times the identity matrix plus uh, sine t times 0, minus 1, 1, 0, which is, lo and behold, our favorite matrix for rotations in 2D cos t minus sine t sine t cos t isn't that great you get a two-dimensional rotation matrix just by exponentiating this anti-symmetric matrix a and in fact that's that's a very general fact that if you exponentiate an anti-symmetric matrix one so anti-symmetric means uh, sort of opposite entries on either side of the diagonal differ by a sign then you're going to get a rotation matrix maybe 3 by 3, maybe 4 by 4, maybe higher dimensional. Okay, so in the next video we're going to look at dot products of vectors and orthogonal matrices and uh, more about rotations.